What's up guys? Welcome back to the garage. Uh, valve lash and engine temperature, how it affects the valve lash. Uh, it's something that's been on my mind all week. About a year ago, I did a video where I told you guys about how I put solid lifters on my existing hydraulic camshaft and how that worked and my experience with it. Uh, earlier this week, somebody made some comments about that video. Uh, it kind of blew me up a little bit, said that I was putting misinformation out, I was misleading people. And it wasn't so much about the putting the solid lifters on the cam, it was something I said about the valve lash, setting up the valve lash. I had said that uh, initially when the engine was cold, I was gonna set the valve lash to 10 thousandths. And once I warmed the engine up, I expected the lash to increase to about 14 thousandths. And then at that point I was gonna pull the valve covers off, recheck, lash, make an adjustment if needed, because I wanted to set it at about 14 thousandths. Hot. So I've been thinking about this all week and I'm really kind of second guessing myself now because I had done research before I even did this swap. Now this was 2020. And uh, initially I thought it makes sense when the engine's cold, as it heats up, the lash would decrease because all the components warm up, they expand, lash goes away. So you'd probably want to run it a little bit, a uh, little looser when it's cold. Uh, some of the research that I did, I was finding stuff that contradicted that, said that when the engine was cold, as it heats up, the lash increases for the fact that the head as it gets hot, it would expand, uh, essentially raising the rock arm slightly away from the camshaft, so your lash will increase. I even found a uh, engine master's uh, video that they basically did the same thing, except it was hydro or, uh, solid roller lifters that they put on a hydraulic roller cam. Freiberger said that uh, as the head heats up, it grows, lash will actually increase slightly. So I've been thinking about this all week and uh, I just kind of wanted to do a little experiment. I'm out here in the garage, got my car back together from the transmission that I just rebuilt. Uh, I had it running two days ago to fill the fluid. So today it's completely cold. It's just whatever ambient temperature is, which today is actually unseasonably warm. It's about 50, even though it's January. So I wanna, I got the valve cover off I want to measure the lash on number one cylinders, intake and exhaust, rocker arm. Put the valve cover back on, run the engine up to operating temperature, measure the lash. Because now I'm curious, does it increase or does it decrease? Uh, I wasn't intentionally trying to put out any misinformation. Uh, it was just the research that I had done. And at this point now, doing this experiment is going to tell me whether it does in fact increase or decrease. Just put that to bed. Uh, so I'm gonna time lapse the engine being warmed up because I don't think you wanna sit here for 15 minutes and just watch this thing run. So I'm gonna set the camera up, time lapse it. Once it's warmed up, I'll go back to regular speed and we'll check the lash then when it's hot. So first I wanna check it now, cold. Uh, I had already had it initially picked a few of these uh, feeler gauges out and I found that 16 thousandths actually fit in there nice 17 is you can shove it in but it's definitely tight 16 is kind of where it likes to be at and just so you know 55 degrees 51 you know the engine's about 50 to 55 degrees here so once I warm it up we'll see where it's at then and we can kind of put this to rest a little bit.
now. We're gonna pull this valve cover, measure the temp of the rocker arms and the head. Put it up on top dead center. And see where it's at. My whole point of doing this video is not to prove that I was right about talking about this valve lash thing. It's to see what actually does happen. So don't get me wrong. I like being right, but I like being, I like to know the facts. And uh, if I was wrong, I want to know if I was wrong. like it's pretty close to being on top dead center. There it is. Top dead center. Number one cylinder. Move this in here a little bit, get a little closer view. Okay, I'm gonna start with the 16 thousandths and see what it feels like. Let's see here, that is 16 thousandths. See if it focuses. There you go. Felt pretty loose. Let's try for the 17. Actually, I would say, kind of hard to read this 17 one, but it is. I would actually say that that 17 one is actually a little looser. Check the temp here. See there, it's 100, 105, 120. It's not like actually driving it down. I mean, the head itself is. 190 rocker arms aren't quite obviously at the same temperature like 120 I'm gonna grab an 18 see if I can get an 18 to go in there it is an 18 thousandths and that one actually goes in a little tight though uh, so Grab a 19. Let's see here, you can see that. It is a 19. There you go. No, 19 is not going to go. So, Kind of a little bit different of a result than maybe some of you would have thought. Uh, it actually did increase with en engine temperature and I'm assuming that uh, had I been, went out and actually driven the car uh, for a little while and got the head, like the rocker arm components up even further in temperature, close, you know, 180, whatever, 
that I would have been able to maybe even fit that 19 in there. So uh, you be the judge. I mean, I tried to do this video with like the very, I wanted to do it with like very little to no editing. So nobody could say, hey, you changed something, you know, once you paused the film or whatever, you, you readjusted it, which I did not readjust anything. So uh, I had been second guessing myself, but this kind of puts it to bed. Uh, and then also, this isn't the end all. This is a push rod V8, iron block, iron head. Uh, if you got an aluminum head, from what I was reading, they can actually expand even more, making that lash greater. Uh, from what I read, that if you run tight lash hot, you can actually have a no start condition when the engine is cold because it actually will close up and hold and the lash goes away it will hold the valves open and you won't have any compression so uh maybe a different result than some of you thought maybe some of you already knew this you tried this already but i thought it'd be an interesting experiment for a saturday afternoon uh you know so not trying to like bash anybody uh i do i don't mind if people disagree with me in the comments i like intelligent discussion or intelligent uh debate about things so don't feel like i'm always i don't feel like i'm always right i definitely uh wouldn't mind other op opinions but uh just don't really appreciate getting like slammed in the comments and oddly enough for some reason them comments aren't even there anymore so i'm assuming either he or youtube deleted them because i do not delete comments because i don't really care if somebody wants to bash me or not, I'll let it there, whatever. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, uh, I will be taking the car out here for a road test shortly, testing this new reverse manual valve body and this rebuilt trans. Uh, I can't wait to see how it actually works on the, on the street. I ran it on jack stands. The trans goes through the gears great. Uh, third gear, absolutely rattles the interior when it hits so and that was just in barely any throttle so should be fun uh can't wait till spring get this car back at the track but hopefully i can get maybe some videos on the street here with this uh new trans so all right guys uh, i'll catch you next time